I'm seeing a change because as a consultant, we're seeing a change. Uh, we see now the ministries, they used to have anything called Permanent Future Practice Unit. But you see a change today. They are looking into setting up enterprise risk management. So it's not only just about EPU, emergency preparedness, or even the health security side. I think today they, we also recognize the threats of cyber security. Who are the threats? The threat of what uh, PK said is not like a certain threat. He actually includes into the threats. So as you see that the, the, the change is coming along the way, many are changing and uh, setting up enterprise risk management. But we also want to be very careful about enterprise risk management. Who actually perform in this community? In terms of the competency training of everything, like what he said, it's not just about IT, physical, infrastructures to understand what you need. So the whole enterprise risk management can actually comprise of the, all the different parties, especially CSO, CIO, business unit, infrastructure together to come together. The way I look at risk, I also totally agree with him. It's not about just one thing, it's about interdependencies. In order to get the risk correct, it's about interdependency and understand. No, if I can bypass your IT, what are my facility? Who else can control it? What's the next player? So I think the risk management is about getting the expertise together within the organization, coming together to understand the risk, the threat. Now, not only that, sometimes we also realize that we talk so much about enterprise risk management. We also ask this, are they competent enough to realize where the fault, where the problem? So it's not just coming together, ah, oh, okay, this is your, but I think it's good enough, it's better to understand what's happening today. Would you argue that both IT and security would always be part of the enterprise risk management management structure in your organization? It can be part of it, but it may not be the total control. Now, one thing for sure is about, I look at it in transparency. Uh, forgive me, because when I when I do audit and so on, the IT security side, they will tend to hide certain things, okay? Because they know that they may <laughs> not, so they're going to say, okay, I'm going to leave it aside. <laughs> 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 so now, <laughs> someone in neutral to understand the risk. You're going to have no friends at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I mean, when we do audit, whatever, we realize, hey, there are certain parts, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Or they may worry that, hey, we've got enough budget, we can't do it. So we need someone very neutral as a transparent. As a I understand that, and I, I think, yeah. I think that I understand your formulation of PRM. The, the primary driver of PRM is providing exactly the overarching management structure that gets rid of the question: Should Alex win or should PK win? <laughs> Stop. And you're both you're both on the team along with uh, the business continuity manager, who can get no respect, and I'm HR. Uh, I don't know what other functions would be. So I'm just trying. What's the what, what should be the composition of the ERM management function group committee if it does not include IT and security? Who else is on it? Okay. It's, it seems to me that ERM simply solves the problem. I don't have to choose Alex or PK. I choose ERM, and they're both on it, and they're. And, and, by the way, let me argue on the point now. Let me argue on the point. Now, to understand risk or IT in the enterprise risk management, it's not about understanding the technical ability and so on. It's to really understand the concept and understanding the underlying what it costs. So, I may not need to be a very good CEO, but I can <coughs> understand the technology side. What's the impact on it? Like what was it? This is security, infrastructure security, and so on. Okay, now, if they look at the competency, what are the kind of competency training that we have in the industry today for ERM? Okay. So, of course, the ERM, the people that are getting it should have a deeper from different organizations. What they're doing, what are so called the critical businesses that you're doing, what are critical infrastructure that we can come together to have a more effective called ERM. And the solution to that is, well, I don't know myself, so let's get Alex, let's get PK, let's get all the players who have that knowledge. There's this, thing called, there's this thing called impact analysis, to understand where the risks get these together. And PK's <coughs> approach is exactly the opposite. It's 
instead of focusing on impact, is focusing on threats and being aware of the threats and thinking about them. Correct. That's where the I saw I saw two two three zero comes in. I saw two two three zero this year before that you do the risk analysis and it packs together. So you look at the big risk, but that change. It's not about just how the risk impact the businesses. Today with the new BCN standard, which I think is correct, let's identify where are my critical services. We cannot afford to fail. Can I say something? What are the risks that may impact these services? You can debate, it's okay. <laughs> of course, you're going around and around and still talking about the importance of ERM. No question about that. Correct. Correct. But ERM in any organization is not a command function, it's a staff function. Right. So you are head of ERM, you are responsible for education of the staff on ERM, you are supposed to now uh, serve a committee, chaired usually by the president or the CEO or the COO and consisting of all the risk owners. So the risk owners themselves are still responsible for risk. For risk. So you have identified uh, all the big category of risk and then the CFO responsible for financial risk, IT risk will still be CIO, you see? Yeah, and uh, business risk there will be somebody else. So I think if you are a staff function, you cannot command people. So how can you then command <laughs> IT <laughs> <laughs> Anybody have any questions? We can. Uh, there we go. Yes. Yes. Is it Henry? Yeah. Henry, yes. Uh, I think as my understanding is that it's more of the organization structure rather than who is responsible for what. You know, three of you, uh, when I see that, are responsible for certain aspects of security. Mm. One is to audit, another to ensure the security process. While the main head, I would put it as a CIO. When, if I see, as example, if you are in a company where the CEO or COO is running an operation of certain thing, but ultimately the, the, the CEO is the one responsible <coughs> overall. Similarly, I think is if I were to put the structure, I would put the CIOs at the top and the CISO or ERM underlying that. Or maybe ERM as independent as a third party to assess the And is that because do you think that's the way it is or the way it should be? I don't know whether it is, but I think it should be that way. Because otherwise, uh, as actually, the prof has a very good, uh, you know, reason uh, bringing up. You need a driver. You cannot just uh, the person sitting and ensure that team is to comply on certain things. But who will execute that? You know, and who will ensure? But the whole team is under CIO, the whole operation team. You know, but if. ERM is in charge of security, who will be asked to run it? I mean, <laughs> unless he will set up another IT team again. Yes, so it is. <laughs> See, I'd be prepared to argue that from a threat perspective, the CIO is probably yeah. better able to understand the technical threats All right. of a yeah, cyber attack. But with respect to uh, incident response, the CIO is way down my list of people that I want leading my response when I can't operate my reservation system at the largest hotel in Las Vegas because it's been taken out, right? What, what is my, my reaction is, well, you were in charge of fixing the threat problem and you really screwed it up. Now I need to get the, the varsity team on the field to manage the response. And I'm gonna need HR and marketing and risk. I mean, I'm gonna need a whole lot of other people. Right? I'm, I don't know whose argument I'm making here, but I, 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 I think that the, I think that it's instructive that PK is focused on the risk side, the threat side, and that uh, Wong is is focused on the impact side because that's what business continuity teaches you. Focus on you. I, I'm not sure, I do not want to shoot my mouth off. I saw hands in the back with yeah. where you are. So the last one. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. I think. No. Mitesh is referring to you. Yeah. So go ahead. I hope uh, my uh, Udon will give some, uh, some ideas, hopefully it will be contributing to uh, this. <coughs> um, I think most importantly, we need to understand the commodity of the business. Data. The value of data is that, firstly, highly classified, sensitive data, how do you manage it? And the 
data set branch of different the operational side. So it will be, be able to manage this two and identify this two, be it physical security, be it IT security. Hmm. They, are, they are the important people to protect this commodity, to make sure the business is running. Because I have I have opportunity to speak to many people in the field. So um, the the thing that worries me is they don't know the movement of the data. Who Sorry, says who doesn't? A lot of people in the management, the people I've spoken to, doesn't know how the data being moved. Okay, and I'm working I have of years working in CBD, so I I have a chance to see some critical information that how it's being handled at the lower end and compared to the higher end. You have the most powerful firewall you can protect your organization today. But do you know that a, a, a human being compromised, your delivery is being compromised, where they carry all the information they, that is important to with him? That is the legal information to me. So, did you ever think of from the top to the left, to the, to the lower, in terms of, let's say, from a, a security perspective, it's a security perspective? How do you assess it? And I think I agree with every one of you that threat. Analysis is very important. How do you play the strategy of it? And uh, what kind of uh, tactical, uh, I would say, the response that you help to protect the data? Because everyone is critical in this. Um, in this um, Can I just ask, which which role were you on when you which role? I was in ERM. Uh, I was I was because ERM set would come up with the assessment. Okay. Well, in terms of uh, as far as the planning, the strategy, yeah. as far as auditing. So okay. this this three part is very important. I need to give others a chance. Your second, your your first. Go ahead, Vikas. Yeah, I I think fantastic. Uh, if we were all here to start with, uh, uh, no punches at the end. I would say <laughs> you're never going to be a CEO because you're going to choose. One. <laughs> you can love them all, but you got to choose one. Uh, I would still stick with the uh, chief security officer. The the debate started with the proposition of the incident response process. Okay, I would never imagine, I have, I have been a consultant in the past, uh, I've done IT security consultancy, I've done VCM consultancy, and I have never seen a ERM function standing up tall during a crisis scenario. I mean, I can bet my life, they are the greatest people who can do greatest of Excel sheet mathematics. I mean, I, I, they do the best mathematics, but when, when in terms of incident response, they debate, I think they just, nobody, here is a very good function, it's an important function, it should be there. And as I, as Nat said, that it should be a steering committee involved of people from the security side, the IT side, maybe the HR side, all the sides on the off side as well. But when it comes to the incident response time, who would stand up tall and answer them? So I think I, I would still go if, if I would still go with the ICIO if it was a choice, but definitely my first choice would be the chief security officer because uh, we always have seen as an auditing as well. The auditing process of physical security, the evidence is black and white. Mm -hmm. When when I do an IT security audit, there are always gray areas. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Okay. So yeah, that's my thought. I'll still stick with the Sir? Well, I've actually started with ERM, but now I think security makes more sense. <laughs> 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 you know, you know. <laughs> the trouble, good trouble. The quality is good. You want the free pass at LPS. <laughs> 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 the, case, the case I think it's about is that if anything happens, really happens, who goes to jail? Yeah. It's really not the CIO, the CEO, it's the CEO. So when I started to vote for ERM, I was really looking at the CEO as the person that's in charge of ERM. And you think about it, uh, who actually uh, makes the ERM decision after all the proposal? It's really the CEO that decides on yeah. that. So and the other thing that I was looking at was more, when we have a CIO as a specialist, a chief risk officer as a specialist, now when the debate happens, uh, who is the referee? It won't be the chief. Uh, it won't be the enterprise management which you rightfully point as a is committee function. You will be the P that has to decide. Right? If the P doesn't, because he's the one that eventually go to jail. So that's the that's the final matter. Uh, I, I am 
I just now heard about the incident reporting and who goes to jail. It's not a question about who is going to the jail. It's about the IT security is more about prevention rather than uh, who faces after a breach is there. Uh, I happen to be responsible for IT security and all that stuff some point in time. And the nature of the ERM function where it comes in the form of cross-functional team is more important and that's what suits this uh, aspect of security because the, like if the techies are, the CIO is responsible for it, a lot of people get so focused on firewalls and this and that and security in the form of just paper prints gets jeopardized, trust me. That is the weakest link, you will find passwords printed somewhere, you will find some papers lying on the printers with sensitive information about the systems and all those things. And we are monitoring here on a dashboard about the security and all those things. Oh, firewall everything is closed. But what about the printer? It's revealing. Well, uh, you say you're in charge of IT security? Yeah. So and to whom do you report? Uh, at that time, it What's was... The as a position, it was reporting to the operations manager. Uh, nice. We didn't have this function of an ERM at that time. Did time, you have a I, CIO function? Uh, we did have a CIO. But, but your function did not report to that person? It did not report. Okay. But at that time, this concept of ERM wasn't as evolved, which is as of now. And I, when I relate my experience back to this thing, I feel that this is a more comprehensive way of looking at it. the operations person to whom you did report? Was there a security function as well in your organization and did that report to the operations guy too? I will just uh, take my um, uh, stuff on the security from the IT perspective. Like uh, once we had visitors uh, like uh, from uh, and at the time these guys they were supposed to be uh, like security experts. Yeah. So our guys from security team, they were also very keen on showing that we are very security uh, conscious. And the guys, uh, like in that zeal, they were checking, the security guys were checking all the laptops and all those things, but they can't make any sense out of that. So it's not a question, uh, I mean, when it comes to a physical aspect, I understand security. But I cannot imagine someone from security knowing the aspects of the uh, <laughs> aspects of what to check in IT security. I, I mean, yeah. Okay. Sure. Can we uh, Can I just share a little bit? I mean, if you look at any data centers, any decent data centers, the very first thing you approach, you see gates, <coughs> lockers, a lot of elements. These are all physical security <coughs> elements. That's a very key thing that you notice. You go into an office, the first thing is your employee badge. Step on turnstiles, step on doors. These are again physical security elements. Typically, uh, pardon me, but, uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, IT security people are very good with securing you know, networks, uh, desktops, this <coughs> and so on, but extremely bad at physical security. Um, the Korean man will get a back door into the buildings and all that, and these are really bad handled by physical <laughs> security people. And when we talk about convergence, uh, IT, physical security, cyber security, all these trends, really. Uh, I'm trained in IT, my background is everything in IT, but I decided to go the path of fiscal security. Because really, that, that, that whole, where I'm coming from, uh, we look at the fiscal security threats and IT security, it's very natural that it comes together. We talk about things like clean desk policy. Who's going to enforce? You need fiscal men on the ground to check this. Where does ERM fit in your worldview? In my view, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs>
IT or ERM or security. Raise your hands if you think that your own views about this question are largely influenced by your experiences in, in your work, as opposed to where it should be is, when I think about it, I think about the security guards who were not very effective, or I think about the ERM people who were not very How many of you think that your view is affected by your own work experience? Which goes back to, I think it was you who said, you gotta understand the culture of the company or the, the business of the company, right? And in that case, there is really no right answer, is there? Right? Right. What, works, what, what works for the guy who's in charge, and if the guy in charge changes, yeah. we may have to do it differently. All right, who, I'm sorry, yes, sir. I'm Sean. Sorry. Sean? First, I'm a uh, cybersecurity user. So it's backup of two other things. I used to be in security. I did run an audit. Speak out, so I can hear you. So I, I did run audits and physical ad. But uh, first, I'm a salesperson. And I did work for an open source intelligence agency as well. So uh, what I see here is everybody here has very interesting population. Mm. But the key thing is, uh, I will still put in the ERM for one reason. But I'm saying that with one condition, ERM has to evolve because it provides a framework for totality to look at things. Uh, it's just like fighting a war. There are two things, proactive, defense, as well as offense. You need to look at that. And both security and IT go hand in hand. This site knows all the information to feed in. He has all the ground technical knowledge to know how to actually defend. So, there's no way you can put together. The question is, how many of them can evolve depending on the organization need to take that route where, you see, the, problem, the interesting part about ERM is, is actually a strategy. Now, in, in a way, if I look at it from a military aspect, and I, I, I mean, I'm used to service the military, there's counterintelligence, there's intelligence. Uh, there's actually uh, something even more sinister than intelligence itself, which is the offensive capability to deny entry now, there's also the overt and the covert. The, the key thing is, both sides, and even at the strategy and the tactical level, must understand what exactly is the threat are we going for. Now, I used to, I mean, in the way of open source intelligence, it's really not so much about breaking into your system. It can be as simple as, I know your disposal strategy. I go to your rubbish bin, pick up your hard drive, decode it. You can, you can study from how the Israelis do it. When they dispose that, they are breaking it apart. The paper. Okay. Yeah. So, it is a constant evolution depending on each organization. I mean, it can even go down to what exactly is the nature of the threat. I mean, I can use cyber security to, have, to affect the physical security of my staff. That itself is a threat. Sure. The other way, I can affect the physical aspect by attacking the infrastructure to weaken his cyber security to do something else even more sinister. So then the question is, where does it end? Okay. So, more questions, no more really answers, but this is a question. No, 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 no. We're, we're going to have this question settled. <laughs> 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 so, uh, I don't want to call on you again if there's somebody who hasn't asked a question yet. Okay, go ahead. This is about coming today. I have an opportunity to meet one operational risk management guy doing clean nest operations on the He's not a security guy. Okay, about Sean, I agree with you because. Um, where I have the opportunity to learn about espionage threat uh, prevention as well as the other thing um, on this um, conversion from physical and um, cyber of security. This is where, um, let's say I took, a, I took a, maybe an analogy. If uh, IT people never register himself to, to service the desktop within the finance department, and this guy enter after 7 o'clock, 7 p.m., when all the finance department is gone. Does it raise a fresh flag within the organization? Because this will include physical security and the cyber security. Why? There's already a writing, uh, a white paper talking about 